How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Today, we're continuing on with some load testing for different wire connectors. Now, we're going to test the standard wire nut versus my favorite, the Waga 221 lever nut versus the Waga's push-in connector. Now, push-in connectors are very convenient, but the question is, will they hold up? So we're gonna test them today over their design loads, which they are designed for 12 gauge wire, 20 amps. We're gonna go all the way up to 30 amps for 25 minutes and see how they hold up. Now I will say push-in connectors get the most negative comments on my channel. So we'll see, does that negative overall opinion play through with what we see in our testing results? So let's jump into it. So I'll swap off the last connectors. That was the larger 613 Wago lever nut, which can go up to 10 gauge. And this one is a 413 that can go to 12 gauge then removing the Harbor Freight lever nut, which is new to the market and did pretty good in our last testing. Then install this Wago push-in connector, the 2773, making sure the wires are fully seated, which are easy to see through the transparent housing. Now we'll be loading these up, providing power from an EcoFlow Delta 3, which can easily provide 30 amps and up to 4,000 watts out. Now what I'm gonna be able to do is crank up these three space heaters off one outlet and get it all the way up to 3,600 watts, which will put us right at that 30 amps at 120 volts. Obviously, I do not recommend you doing this at home. This is just for a controlled test. And you can see there is our watts out coming from the EcoFlow. So what the heck is the Wago 2773? It is just a push-in connector, and it is the smallest, most compact that I've seen on the market. It comes in two wire, three wire, five wire, six wire, and all the way up to eight wire. It has a little actual testing port right here, so you could test with your multimeter down to the bus bar, which is a pretty convenient feature. And if we compare my favorite Waga 221 lever nuts, which are reusable, these push-ins are not reusable. They look pretty similar from this perspective, but really when you see them side to side, you'll see how much thinner the 2273s actually are. So they take up way less space in your box. And look at this guy, it can handle eight 12 gauge and still be this compact. So that is pretty impressive if you ask me. Now again, they are one and done. And some of the pushback on push-ins, you can see that little silver tab. That is the only thing that's gonna be holding in your wire. So you just take it and push your wire past. Waga always has the best housings where you can easily see your wire. Now that tab is holding that in and it's pushing it, making contact with this backside. You can see that silver plate in there, that is your bus bar. So that is what's gonna be bringing together your wires that you're connecting up and that's what's gonna be completing your circuit. So they're very easy to use and overall, again, the packaging is gonna be hard to beat, but will they hold up to some loads and how do they compare versus lever nuts and a wire nut? And then the way I get the temperatures is I just use a FLIR thermal imaging camera in the end of my iPhone. Now, I'm sure there's some error in this type of measurement, but we see the whole heat signature and then we can get the highest temperature in the hottest spot of each of the connectors. So let's look at the data points that we ran and those were five separate test points and it totaled 25 minutes in duration. Now you find the link in the description for the 2773 push-in connectors and also the Wago 221 lever nuts, which I think are great for your DIY electrical projects. You'll see that right below the video. And then also you'll see a link down there. We are trying to do a few other initiatives associated to the highest costs that we have as homeowners and homeowners insurance is quickly rising to the top. So if you have time, you can fill out a survey there and we're collecting different things like deductibles, your cost, how much you're covering, liability. So when we get that data, then we can share it right back to you guys. We are not asking for your name. We're not asking for your phone number, your email. We're not contacting you. We just need data from the audience so then we can share it back to you. What is the normal deductible people carry? Are you paying more or less than your peers? That's what we're working towards. And we're about halfway there on the data points we need. So the more people that jump in, the faster we can get that back to you guys. So you can make a smart decision about one of those big ticket items in the overall cost of your home. So looking at these data points, and I also compare these to the last sets we did. So I have wire nut one and wire nut two. This set of data over here is from the last testing we did with the Harbor Freight lever nut, and then the larger 613 Wago lever nut, and that can handle 10 gauge wire. And then this set here is of the three that we tested today. That was the same wire nut, it's wire nut two, but it's the same wire nut, 
And our temperatures were pretty similar, which was good as a baseline that we were doing a test that actually produced a similar amount of load through that wire. So then we can compare the 413 lever nut in the middle, and then specifically the, not 2273, 2773 push-in connector. Now we are seeing that the hottest one is the push-in connector. So it is substantially warmer. And if we look at that and take an average, we're looking at 130 degrees Fahrenheit on average. And then if I look at the lever nut, that's 122. So eight degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the lever nut. And then we're looking at 109, so 21 degrees warmer than the wire nut as our baseline. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and you can see how that compares to our last testing results as well, but compared to what? So it is important that we also change this axis and we go up to the design limit. So all of these wire connectors are designed to take up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So we still have a large gap there, even with the push-in connector. So although I'm not going to swap out as my main connector being the push-in connectors, because I do like the reusability of the WAGO 221 lever nuts, I would say I would feel comfortable, especially after we loaded 30 amps through this connector that is really only designed to take 20 amps. So what do you guys think? Down in the comments, let me know. Are you comfortable with two 773s? Do you use those currently? Specifically, I use these to bring together when you have a lot of neutrals or grounds in a multi-gang box. That would usually be like a light switch box. I really like the six wire to bring those together. It's super compact and very easy to install and very easy to add an additional circuit. Now, last load testing video, you guys asked, what was the temperature of the wire itself, the Romex? And it was about the same as the lever nut 123, 124, depending on the time interval. And that was really similar to what I was seeing on the lever nut. So just the resistance in that wire, just sending the load down the 12 gauge wire was very similar to the lever nut. So honestly, the lever nut's doing pretty good in terms of not adding additional resistance at that connection. But my go-to is still Wago 221 lever nuts. I think there's a few different applications where they're just amazing. Now, if you wanna check out those in action and why I do the lever nuts, check out this video right here, which is all about installing a fan. Now we dive deep in a bunch of different junction boxes and what you actually need to carry the fan load. But specifically, you'll see how using lever nuts make things like installing fans or light fixtures so much easier. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.